Welcome to the second episode of Series 53, everyone. This episode, we get to take our deep dive into Nova character and world creation, uh, as we are joined again by Spencer Campbell to discuss this twice any nominated RPG. Perhaps by the time this comes out, we will know if it's a winner or not. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a winner in my heart because uh, I love this game. It is. Uh, yeah. But we really don't have any announcements right now for today's episode. Uh, just check back with us in the call to action to hear about our latest Patreon updates, uh, including some shout outs and even a new review. Ooh. Yeah. Enjoy the show, everybody. episode of Character Creation Cast, Spencer was creating a plague-braining pox, Amelia was creating a necromantic grim, and I was creating a bloodthirsty sanguine. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. So those are our those are our starting attributes. Uh, and like I said, you can eventually get uh, some boost to those from mods later on in play. But that's where we begin. The other thing that we need to program with our spark is the starting health and fuel that we have. Um, we each character starts at a baseline of two health and two fuel. So you can take two hits before you supernova and you can spend two. You can do two powers before you're out of fuel. Um, and now we have eight points to distribute those as we see fit. Um, so if you want to be very tanky, you can throw a bunch of points into health so that you're not worried about maybe dropping uh, at the at an inopportune time. Um, if you're worried about spending out fuel, uh, add a bunch of points to your fuel column and, and truly die a lot <laughs> and hope that your supernova is helping you when it does. Um, and uh, or, or, you know, kind of a blend of, of both. However you want, you can spend eight more points uh, between them. So what what does happen when you when you run out of fuel? Yeah, so that's that's the one tricky thing is when you run out of fuel, you can't activate your powers and you kind of have two okay. two options in play. One is you technically can use your attributes at any time during the game to describe doing something. So you can still describe like picking up a giant rock and throwing it at somebody and, you know, use sun to roll it. There's no. Uh, harm that's mechanically associated with it, but as a table, you can kind of decide like, oh yeah, that rock would do one harm or two harm or something like that. Mm. Um, or you can be doing other things in the environment that are going to be helping your friends by doing some attribute roles to like change the environment or, or, or things like that. The other thing is whenever enemies die, the GM is going to roll a D6 for each, uh, each body. And um, on a three through five, that enemy produces a fuel that any spark can pick up. Um, and so you can go, okay, I might not be able to use a power this turn, but let's take out some fools. And then I'm going to, I get first dibs on some of that fuel so that I'm back in, in play. Mm. Um, Oh, okay. So part of that drops is the group thinking like, what do we like, who needs to distribute health right now? And health only drops on sixes. So you don't get health back a lot. And so thinking, well, thankfully, we have a vampire healer that will help us. With that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, you, you're thinking if I do run out of fuel, I'm waiting for an enemy to die by one of my friend's hands so that I can s steal their precious fuel that falls out of their body. Mm -hmm. Or you're trying to contribute through the, uh, the attribute roles and things like that. Okay. I put three more in health and then five into fuel. So seven, five, and seven, right? That's, that's what I did, too. What? I went to five health and, what, seven? Yeah, yep. seven fuel. So this um, should equal 12. Equal 12, exactly. We did it right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, put, um, I put six into health and two into fuel um, because Pox's supernova benefits from having a lot of people infected. And so I don't want to drop right away. I want my, 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 my plague to spread before I drop. So my goal is, unlike many <laughs> sparks, I don't want a supernova all the time. I want to wait until I've truly spread out my influence. I'm going to 
buff my character up a little bit. So I went um, six more into health and two more into fuel. Nice. How much, uh, like, how much health does a typical enemy have then? Yeah, typically an enemy is going to die in one or two powers. Um, they they oftentimes will have maybe two or three harm is pretty um, typical seen on on enemies. So one good strong power or a back to back sort of effect will will knock out most foes, um, and mm -hmm. then the GM will try to throw in some some beefier ones that will slow you down. But my, I've always been of the the mindset that um, an interesting combat isn't made interesting by adding more hit points to the enemies. It's by adding either just more enemies or enemies that do weird and funky things that maybe mm. I, you know, and the GM is fully within their power to just be like, this one has adapted to your strain and is not taking the DO, you know, the dot effect on your POC strain. So now I'm like, oh, OK, I need my good buddy, you know, Grim to, to stab this thing to death with it. <laughs> or something like that because my 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 strain isn't working here and so uh, i i keep health levels low on enemies so that you can't really wipe them out to get those resource drops but also gives the gm like more opportunities for them to play with interesting variations in the enemies instead mm -hmm. so we've got our our sparks all programmed up we've got our spark we've got the attributes and the health and fuel going on now this we enter that space of the the builds. Uh, like I said, you're, we are we're level twenty, so now we're starting to customize our how we want to act on the field. Um, mm -hmm. The flare is just the word that we use as a catch-all for your complete uh, suite of mods that you have access to. Um, and so we're going to choose two mods that we're going to bring with us as starting characters. And just sort of to explain the the mods again, the persistent mods up top are generally like just ongoing bonuses. So these can be things like increasing any of your attributes um, or maybe your health or fuel. You also have mm -hmm. pers persistent mods that are designed specifically to change the way your passive works. Um, so uh, that, that's typically how they are designed. There, there's some variations in that. But so your persistent mods are very much in that realm of passively changing the way that your character works either just by making them stronger or by slightly tweaking some things like your passive or something like that the power mods are plugged directly into powers so you assign them to a specific power so for example if a power mod like finder gives you plus one range I take that plus one range and put it on a specific power that I want to increase the range of. Um, so if my, you know, my power hits everybody at near, now I can do near and far with that particular power. Mm. But also in the power mods, there are four of them that are, each one is very specifically designed for your four powers. So each power has its own key cool power that changes the way or really amplifies that power. So oh, cool. you're thinking like, do I really want to like, dive deep into what these powers are designed to do by amplifying them? Or do I want to craft them and modify them in a way that is my own doing through like the range changes and the harm changes and things like that? Um, mm -hmm. So this, I, you know, I said that choosing a spark is the hardest part, but I think this is the, if not the hardest, this is the second hardest part because there's a lot of okay. mods to choose from and thinking about which ones you want to do is it, it can be tricky. Um, yeah. I highly recommend players, uh, you know, you take take some mods out for a test run and then, you know, change it up. I, I'm not there to say your mods are set in stone for life sort of thing. If you come back from a mission and you go, actually, that mod didn't do what I wanted. I say switch them up and find the mod that helps you with what you want to try to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, now we have the very difficult task of trying to pick two mods that we want to bring with us out onto the field. Is it two mods total between persistent and power? Yes, it is two total. Oh, so that makes it even no harder right fair. now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, well, I got two persistent mods in mind. Now to find two power yeah. mods. No. So it's, it, it becomes settle down. <laughs> yeah. You gotta go on some you gotta go on some missions, sanguine, and then uh -huh. you can uh, really get into the weird blood binding or bending. Oh, these are so good. <laughs> Because I, I was thinking of, uh, I've got two persistent mods in here that look really interesting. Reborn and Mobile Grave combined mm. would be amazing. Like Reborn makes it so when you supernova, your siphon hits all close enemies. And then Mobile Grave means you can resurrect anywhere within near of where you died. So you can hop into a group <laughs> of nearby enemies and just do a supernova 
siphon all around you and just be at full health or whatever. Yeah. And so like you look at that and then you think like, maybe I want to go back and uh, decrease my starting health so that you do die a lot so that you like you activate that supernova more often because you're like, OK, yeah. so maybe maybe I only have three health <laughs> and, and I'm a right. I'm a mean coffin who flies around and steals people's <laughs> blood. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that, that sounds like an amazing group. Yeah. Like killing machine there. Um, can you go above your starting health when you you gain more health um, in there? I, I I would say no, but uh, I mean, I I suppose you 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 could change it at the table if you wanted. But no, the intent is that your starting health is where is your like your cap right now, and that you your cap. you have to get more mods that would change that with time. Um, okay. Oh yeah. So like plus one health yeah. uh, for Hardy and and so on and so forth. Yeah, and, um, and that makes sense. Yeah, so you can you can change your 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 health and fuel with time a little bit through mods, and then you know maybe eventually as a group you go, okay, we want to go specifically out on a mission that finds more hardy mods because we've used them and we want more health, and then you as the GM can think like, okay, how do I? What does that look like to go on a mission to find a, a mod that's maybe not listed here in the the system? Yeah. Oh, that's that's so good. I I think with that I'm gonna go down to four max health <laughs> and push my fuel up a little bit because that sounds amazing to just supernova all over the place that sounds pretty great but i gotta look at the power oh, mods really as well like all my powers i just really like them just <laughs> yeah. really really like them i could do i could do plus one range <laughs> and, and on my siphon and hit all close in here. Ryan, yeah, so I correct. love this about you that you're like, oh, plus one range. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to take the things that are like, you know, like flavorful, you know, like not a plus one, right? Uh huh. And Ryan's like, oh, range. Yeah. But if I, <laughs> I love if that I, about you. If I do plus one range on my siphon, then I affect all enemies that are close and near, right? That's correct. You're, yeah. Oh, Lord. You're such a power See, gamer. But that, then I don't have to jump to them. I know. I know. It's so great, buddy. <laughs> that is one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about with Nova that, you know, plus one range can oftentimes look at it like, well, that's not very exciting. Like, because you, you read all these other powers and mods. And but have, I like, get it. I yeah. And then you go, well, hold on a second. <laughs> and yeah. Plus one range uh, unlocks it does a, a lot. whole yeah. new way to play this character. <laughs> Right, um, right. Which I, uh -huh. I was really happy that I, um, like I said, trying to capture that sense of of builds rather than increasing power. It's more just like, okay, I just want to be the weird moving coffin that dies a lot but steals people's blood, or I want to be the person who just is just pulling in all the blood to me where I am, where I stand, sort of thing. Um, or yeah, I, or I reach out like is you know, sanguine can also turn their blood into blades and attack people and you can increase that range you'd be like i'm literally just a whirling storm of blood blades as i walk around the battlefield <laughs> it's so good i know uh, uh. okay so uh, i guess my question is do these power mods hook onto a specific power or is it yes. all powers? Okay. Yeah. So on the character sheet, you'll see that there's an option for installed mods under each of your four powers. So if you were to like fill out the sheet where you write in your powers, there's a spot under each power mm -hmm. for installed mods and you can always uh -huh. swap them out between missions. So you might have the plus one range on one of your powers during a mission. And then the next one you go, actually, I want a little more range on this one instead. You just, uninstall it from one and move it over to the other one you always oh i like that this pool of mods that you access and unlock over time is meant to be that a pool that you can change between missions once you're in the mission this is what you've what you've equipped your spark to do between them you might learn to adapt or change depending on uh the the, the briefing of the mission where you realize who you're fighting against or how your experience was in the last mission so um Yes, yeah, so you'll you'll hook it onto a power for now, but know that it's not necessarily a permanent choice that it will always be on that power. OK, in which case you just move it down to that section of the power. Exactly. Ex ex section except at the bottom, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, that's like your little like your little suitcase. Right. <laughs> you know, some of those <laughs> mods are obviously linked to a very specific power so that they can't right. go anywhere else. But all those ones in the left column are very intentionally designed to be mobile mods to, to go around to the to whatever place you want to put them at the moment awesome okay okay so i see 
I see it. I've got the list of my persistent mods in total. And then my persistent mod one is the one that I have installed right Correct. now. Correct. Cool. Um, so I am installing Reborn <laughs> because I want to be a nightmare if I die. Um, and then plus one range to my siphon. Very good. So that may that way I have uh all enemies near and close to me will just get uh they they will fuel me basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. Their hate fuels you, Ryan. Uh-huh. And, and their, their blood. blood. <laughs> and their blood. Mostly Mo their blood, but maybe a little hate. Right? Mostly their blood. I agree. Um oh that is oh, so I'm good. I'm so proud of you right now. <laughs> I just want to be a nightmare on the battlefield. <laughs> I love that. I love that for you. <laughs> um, and, and like I can see I can see my advancement options mm. like around this sort of build, like the mobile grave adding on there even more mm -hmm. to I just know. destroy. It's going to be everything. really hard to pick like where I go next. Like it's yeah. like, do I want to like like do I want to take one thing and be like really mm. good at that thing? Or do I want to like slowly build right. out and then up? And then there's this refreshing power mod. If you kill with siphon. You may immediately activate another power, <laughs> uh, but you still have to pay a fuel for that. Yeah. So like, oh, that's good, too. <laughs> Ryan, you can't have all of them. And you want to know the worst part, Ryan? You're never going to get all of them because we're not going to play this. Game. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I can dream. I can dream. All right. I'll save it's that for the fanfic. Evil. True evil. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I uh, I'll have I'll have daydreams of my okay. my sanguine uh, mech just tearing up the battlefield. Yeah. So should we go through like what we have and what we sure. to go with it? Because we've mm -hmm. talked a little bit about like what each of these do, but we didn't really talk specifics of powers that we have. Oh yeah, like yeah, overview please. the powers that our mech are, our, our mechs are generally yeah. all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then if we picked any mods for those, um, what we what we went with ryan do you want to go first since you seem to be like the most excited about your choices <laughs> oh, yeah. here <laughs> all right yeah so i've got the sanguine spark um and uh they they come with the passive uh bloodborne so i could spend a health to activate the blood effect of my powers um and then uh the active powers i have are transfusion so i pick uh two targets that are close to each other and i transfer one health from one to the other um, and if I spend a health, I can transfer health equal to my son, which is three. Uh, so I can pull three uh, health from one uh, enemy and give it to one of us. Love that. Uh, which is amazing. Or uh, I'm assuming I can pick myself oh, yeah. <laughs> and give it to somebody else and pull myself uh, quite literally right into zero health and just... And just and just go. You you have unlocked the puzzle <laughs> of the game perfectly. <laughs> that is exactly oh. what I want you to be able to do. Because <laughs> because I've got four max health. Oops, I used a health to make it uh make it all my sun damage going in there. So Oops. so that takes away the last three health I've got. So no, even if I'm at max, <laughs> I can activate my supernova at any time. You just look at one of your teammates and say, uh, "Here, hold on to this." You just hand them all your blood <laughs> real quick and <laughs> turn it. Into a coffin. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what a typical Nova session looks like. Oh, it's so good. Oh. Um, uh, and then Siphon is uh, apparently my core ability now. Uh, <laughs> that uh, does one harm to uh, an enemy within close range, and then I gain one health. Um, and if I activate it with one health, it affects all close enemies. Um, or plus one range now, so it affects all close and near enemies. Uh, which give me give me more Brutal. range mods for this thing. Um, no, the answer is no. <laughs> and then blood blade, uh, I lash out with whirling talons made of your own blood, which is just metal as heck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you 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 lose one health and deal one harm uh, to every enemy in close range. And if I used uh, another health to activate the blood effect. Ideal harm equal to my shade instead, which is two. Um, and then cauldron is the uh, aforementioned burst into a swarm of bats and move to any location within far range 
uh, and then you deal one harm to all close enemies at that location. Um, and then the blood effect is deal harm equal to your moon instead. And of course, the supernova, uh, the beautiful supernova <laughs> of the Sanguine, is you, you, you get surrounded by a steel coffin, and at the start of your next round, uh, you, you just get up and, and siphon everybody around because <laughs> yeah why not <laughs> uh it uses you your kill action me, i you kill move. you uh-huh yeah. you exactly. sure you want to hurt me you sure <laughs> yeah uh no Think you again. don't all right well i'm gonna hurt myself <laughs> and <laughs> you're getting it anyway <laughs> Too bad. Sanguine truly oh, was excited. Sanguine truly I came together in my mind the fastest of all the sparks. Where like the second I went blood uh, uh vampire robot, it just it came out of me. It was like this all makes sense to me. <laughs> More yeah, so than anything else in the world. Oh I, uh, I I am so excited for this character. <laughs> all right. Uh what do you got, uh Amelia? Okay. So I went with the Grim. I know we're all shocked. <laughs> Uh, my passive ability, raise dead. <laughs> uh, once per round when an enemy dies, you may immediately make them your thrall. They're revived with one health and act with your powers. Um, they can't move unless you have mods that allow it. Um, you have a number of thralls equal to your shade, which I put mine at three. Yeah, three. Mm. Uh, active powers, pull strings, command your thralls to lash out. Um, target thrall attacks a close enemy dealing its harm um siphon which uh sacrifice a thrall within close range it creates drops of health or fuel equal to its maximum health um an ally may claim them so that is vaguely i get to be vaguely helpful sometimes yeah and that that kind of helps um, what ryan had asked earlier about like what happens if i have no fuel well grim just kills one of their puppets and now there's a big right. pile of fuel on the ground for you to uh, yeah. vacuum up Yep. Oh, it's so good. Um, possess, deal two harm to an enemy within near range and give them a single command that they must obey. Uh, and haunt. All thralls shriek into the air. Any enemies within close range to them recoil in fear and cannot act during the GM's turn. Wow. Um, so I also, uh, for that one, did a persistent mod. Whenever a thrall dies for any reason, they activate the haunt effect at their location. Oh, so wow. a, a true um, a, a, a true death scream that haunt, haunts everybody yeah. around them. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, that's that's a good one for a, a siphon as well, huh? Exactly, exactly, right? You si- you you sacrifice one of your own thralls, it, it screams out, "No, why did you do it this to me?" It screams and everybody gets <laughs> yep. killed. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um I forgot that I um also did the power mod for um, pull strings, which is weaver. A number of thralls equal to your shade or fewer may act with pull strings. So I get um, three of them. Nice. That can a true puppet master. Do stuff. Yeah. Um, and then my supernova death curse. Your thralls detonate with their death curse. Each deals two harm to all enemies within close range. So how I imagine Grim typically playing is as a puppet master, your goal is actually to get puppets all over the battlefield rather than like being surrounded by your minions. You kind of want them all over so that you can activate those like haunts, just like a big group over there. You're like, those people mm-hmm. over there are bombarding us. Well, yeah. <laughs> thankfully, I have a thrall Yeah, because they there. can't move. Right. right. So mm-hmm. like basically it's like as long as you have them kind of like nearby or well, close, not near, um, <laughs> close to other people um, or to all your other enemies, they can cause lots of problems. Yeah. So that's that's the fun mm-hmm. that you get to play is like just have one behind everybody. <laughs> yeah. Know? All right. You just yeah. kind of want to like choose where you want your little like ticking bombs essentially to be placed around right. your, your zombie bombs yeah. that will mm-hmm. shriek out in it, yep. fear and pain when they die. Got a whole little That's army of spooky wild. dudes. I can I I I just from these abilities alone I'm picturing like the three of us versus an mm. army. Mm-hmm. Like uh like what is what is that uh the, dyna- like dynasty, the warriors. dynasty warriors? Yeah. yeah 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 you just go in and and just wreck everything yeah <laughs> and and because oh. you can just do them like so we're not just, it's not even like we're rolling to find out if we can we can just do these things these are this is a list of things that i 100 percent of the time can do yep i, I need to play this <laughs> i know 
I kind of want to play. Right Spencer, now. can you? Yeah, can you tell us about your stuff that yes. you picked? So I chose Pox, the the plague bearer uh, spark. So Pox's passive is virulent, which uh, at the start I basically get my plague going. I choose one enemy, and that person is infected, and they uh, they lose one harm every turn. And my goal is to try and spread the plague from that patient zero, essentially, uh, throughout the whole thing to get as many enemies as possible infected before I start uh, activating the the worst parts of the disease. Um, So that's my passive. My active, um, I have infect, where I just throw a plague bomb, uh, and I infect uh, any one enemy within near range. So this is just a way for me to start getting the plague going. Spread, I compel the plague to spread far and wide. I choose uh, somebody who's already infected, who's up to near range, and then I infect every enemy that's close to them. So kind of similarly, I'm trying to be picky and choosy about getting my infection spread in a bunch of different places so that I can activate pockets of rapid spreading on the field. Uh, And then once, uh, so I'm kind of focusing on those things in the very beginning of a fight, typically as a pox. Once I've got my stuff spreading, I'm starting to think more about these other actives. So symptomatic is I decide the fate of the infected. I choose one effect for all infected enemies this round, and it can be minus one harm dealt. So I kind of uh, weaken them plus one harm taken. So I make them vulnerable to harm uh, or I just lock them up and they can't move. So again, like Mm. I'm hoping to activate symptomatic after I've got like five, six slowly withering people out there. And I just say, and you all can't move now. And now they're stuck in place Mm. for us to just do whatever we want after that. And my last active power is fight or flight. Disease can cause unpredictable behavior. Every infected enemy uh, either immediately deals their harm to the closest enemy or runs away from you for one round, the GM's choice. <laughs> so now you've just wow. got chaos that happens. The enemies either turn against each other or they start fleeing from me. And as the GM, you can kind of have some fun with it where some people are fleeing, some people are fighting, um, but truly just pandemonium breaks out uh, as I as I spread things around. Um, I specifically chose two persistent mods that kind of kick off that uh, virulent strain. So I chose Plague Bringer. So uh, instead of uh, infecting mm. one person at the start of the combat, I want to start with three people getting infected. So I really want to start spreading things around really quickly. Uh, and then I also chose Vector, which is once per round, I infect an enemy uh, within close range. So I kind of just walk around and anybody who's near me, I just go, and you also have it and you also have it. So <laughs> I, I, I chose persistent mods that would really lean into that ability for me to spread as fast as possible so that we can capitalize on those other active powers that will uh, either lock them up or let us really ruin their day or whatever it is that we need to do. So that's my that's my character. That's Pox. So good. Oh, this is w- dangerous, <laughs> like extremely uh-huh. dangerous. It, I, I mean, um, between you, like just like slowly killing people and then I can bring them all back. Mm-hmm. And, then, uh, and then me just like, hey, and then you're I'm, like, we I'm, can I'm, get health from them. Uh huh. <laughs> Look at all the blood on that battlefield. Just oh, waiting. Man. Man. Exactly. I, 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 I wither a few people away, weaken them up. When Sanguine comes in and just steals all the whatever blood they have left in them, they're all dead. And then Grim goes, I'll take one of these. They're on our team yeah, now. Is, they actually <laughs> help us now. Uh, and then we just do that again and again until we win. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that's so good. Um, so that's, you know, that's the um, that's the very uh, the, the bulk of character creation. The, the last part is to think about your pilot, the person who's inside this, because we are I've been mm-hmm. using the word robot a lot, but really it's more like an exosuit. Uh, like think about it as a, yes. like a mech. There is a pilot inside who you are when you are back in the city. So, um, you know, I usually type, uh, think about like what your call sign is. So what do people call you out there? What does your pilot look like back in the city? Um, and uh, also write your name and pronouns on your sheet uh, as sort of a final note. Um, and that takes us through character creation, so we can we can do that. There's another thing that I typically do, but I figure we should talk about our pilots first. Yeah. Oh, what's a good call sign? I picked impropriety. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I was just like, random nouns. Impropriety. What a good noun. <laughs> I have an idea of brewing. I just need to check something real quick. Anybody who's ever played a role playing game with me where I get to be a player, which is not very often. I'm often I'm the, for, uh, the forever GM. But when I do get to play my character name in every game is Rasp. 
And I think Rasp feels very appropriate for that. Actually, uh, feels really correct my for this. Yeah. So I will stay as Rasp as my character's name for for this uh, character creation process. Mm-hmm. You could like person name though. People names. Are- yeah, people names are harder, right? Like <laughs> Rasp is fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you listen to our show. You know, I don't do well right, with this. This is, this is the, <laughs> <laughs> I keep changing what is the hardest part of character creation. This is not the hardest part. It's coming up with a, a human name. I think I'm Isaac. I think I like Isaac as a name for a weird plague scientist. Mm-hmm. It's tricky. <laughs> I also always think too hard about mm. it. Like, like it's, it doesn't need to be. Okay, honestly. I just want to name my character Hades. Very good. Oh. What are you thinking, Ryan? Thinking uh, maybe like Crimson Lily for my call sign. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is kind of a, an adjacent way of saying blood flower. Very good. I didn't want to go with like just blood in my call sign name because that's too <laughs> They call me blood. <laughs> oh, like the time I made a vampire named Sanguine Tempest. <laughs> right. <laughs> blood time <laughs> it's blood time <laughs> famous <laughs> slogan <laughs> of saying we tempted it's blood time, it's blood time. <laughs> it's, it's blood time. <laughs> look some things are on the nose some are not it's okay totally good so do we have our pilot i also was just like looking up random nouns mm. too just like trying to think of call signs and this like random noun generator it's like lawyer necktie <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> cool cool Necktie. Necktie. Armadillo. Appetite. Ooh, Appetite's <laughs> a good name for a call sign. Actually. I think, I mean, I... I, I kind of, yeah. All right. Appetite right. works for a lot of things. That's good. I'm going to go with Appetite. It would also work very well for Ryan, but... I yeah, know. I was about to say. <laughs> Also, this list also includes sick. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sick. But I think I'm going to go with Appetite. Interesting. Are 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 we doing last names for? Our, uh, we are no not. way. No, you ask too okay. much. <laughs> too <laughs> much. All right. So I, I'll I'll just stick with a, uh, a first name for my character. I was just wondering if there's any sort of trend anybody was doing for last names. Uh, since we're in the we're in the future of, mm. I imagine Earth, right? Assumptions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did, did Earth go flying off in this yeah, scenario so that's, with no more? <laughs> that's what you kind of have to hand wave away where you're like, well, wait a minute. Why <laughs> Why is the planet still <laughs> like not flinging? Uh, where, what's the orbit I mean, coming could, from? It, what, I mean, who uh, is it still orbiting is the question, right? right? And, uh, and well, who would know unless the stars are changing? I and, don't know. And, I mean, I feel like we'd all kind of feel a little sick, a little queasy if we weren't turning. No, we'd still be revolving. Or, or rotating, we just wouldn't be uh, flung out into the <laughs> yeah <laughs> the galaxy. I think we'd just be uh, we'd just be. But moving it's it. It w- you know we wouldn't. You're right. We wouldn't notice though because our moon would come with us. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, our good friend the moon. That's definitely not cursed. We'd and be worshipped by a gross group of cultists. <laughs> we'd be on the largest spaceship in the in the world. Yeah, or in the solar system or galaxy. Yeah. yeah well, where are all the other planets? Yeah, they would just go they flying went off, off in their too. Own too. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. I love That's it. a future expansion is Nova Mars and what's going on on Mars at the time. Oh, yeah. and are I they on a, are they on a collision course? Oh, oh my God. Well, so Ooh. the question then, though, is like, what did Mars look like before right. the sun went out, too? Right. Oh, OK. <laughs> We don't have, we don't have that's, time. That's next. <laughs> that's the next. Next time yeah, on exactly. Character Creation Cast. <laughs> I, I am writing down just the words Nova Mars on my sheet of paper here because that's going to haunt me for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. I can imagine like the, the sun uh, exploding at a very specific like time. Mm-hmm. And then it's like the orbits are just at the right point, so they're actually going to meet right. up and not <gasps> hit. And now you've got two planets kind of, like, dancing as they fly through the galaxy. Yep. Oh, and then we get into a space war with Mars. Yep, exactly, because we start to run out of sun shards, and they've got precious sun shards over there, and we want their sun shards. <laughs> Give us your shards. Exactly. Did you pick a name, Ryan? Yeah, Liliana is my pilot name. Okay. Cool. Is the that- Crimson Lily. Is that it? Did we make characters? We did. 
And so we did, we did it. You, I, I do see some nice little optional things uh, in the session zero. Stuff. Yeah. So I, at the end of character creation, I, I say a couple things. One, you're ready to hop into a mission. Technically, you can generate one and, and get going. Two, there's an example mission in the book that you can use if you don't want to make one. But three, I, I uh, laid out some more like world building stuff that happens in session zero, specifically around like learning more about your pilots and also the city so that you have a little bit more context, context to like the sun shard and what what does our sun shard town look like compared to maybe others and mm -hmm. so that's that's uh sort of a continued optional path that you can go with the character creation so you can learn more about your pilots um how they got to be who they are and what this city is like that we've all we all work out of i i, I mean, mean yeah eh, eh, we would eh, like eh, to oh, do that like, you're on character creation <laughs> cast. I, was, I was gonna say I'd, I'd like to do it but no this is the one time that we're yeah, not gonna do that we're good. <laughs> i'm good i made my blood vampire okay. robot I'm, i got what i came here for <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah. But what what sort of person inhibits this monstrosity? Yes. Though? So um, if you're looking at the the rule book, it's page thirty one in the rule book for for readers at home. Um, there's um, you know there, before that there's some stuff about session zero setting up safety tools and things like that, which is very important for a game about spooky haunted worlds and combat and things like that. Um, and mm. then once you once you've done that. Let's learn a little bit about your 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 pilots and and the people who are inside of it. Um, so I have um, some questions that I've used as example questions to ask uh, each other as we think about uh, our pilots. The first one being how long you've been a pilot. Thinking about you know are you an old vet? Is this your first mission out? Uh, some you know anywhere in between. Um, so how long do you think you've been been doing this whole thing? Um. I feel like a medium amount of okay. time. Like, I don't think I'm like veteran veteran, but I think um, I, cause I kind of going into the next question that you have mm. here, which is, have you always used the spark or have you tried other models? Um, I think you have to work your way up to something oh. like this. Like you can't, you can't start out controlling other creatures and stuff. I think that that's like a mm. higher level of, rather than just like learning to control your own spark mm. first. So I think you you have to like work your way up to Grim. Which which spark did you use before you were were Grim? Did you go through like a bunch of them, or was it like you spent most time with a particular one, and then you were like, okay, I think I'm ready. I've got a handle what these sparks feel like. I'm ready to do some yeah. necromancy. Um, I feel like Scorch would be mm. like personally where I would want to be, and I think makes sense. Um. Yeah, because Scorch has those like Story weird wise. tentacles with the sun shards on them. And then you kind of, as right. Grim, have tentacle so swords that you stab into people. Right. So. right. And it has some of the same, like sort of like magic y mm. kind of feel mm -hmm. to it, too. So I think that would be where I started. Um, and then if you're if you're good enough at that, you can kind of choose something else from there. Cool. Mm -hmm. What what drew you then to to Grim? So, you know, you have to, like you said, you have to advance to that point. So what, what was the thing that made you want to go like, mm -hmm. okay, I've, I've done my time with Scorch, but I've, I've had my eye on that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be Grim. Um, uh, I feel like maybe I have like a mind for tactics. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I definitely put more, um, more points into shade too. Um, so I think I just have like a better, mind for tactics and this like requires a little bit more thought that way and a little bit more like mindfulness of the battlefield cool um which just sort of appeals to me personally and and what's the thing that makes your grim spark unique and this is actually a question that i oftentimes expand when i sit down with people is you know there's sort of the assumption that there are multiple grims and there's multiple poxes right. and things like that but we could also work with the assumption that there's just one. You are Grim. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. you can kind of, this question is designed under the assumption that there are multiple Grims and it's how did you set yours apart from all of the others so that when people go by, they go like, ah, oh, I know that Grim compared to another one. Yeah. Um, hmm. I have to think yeah. about that a little bit. Cool. We'll, we'll come back to Sweet. it. Um, so, Ryan, how long has your character been a pilot? I want to say my character is um, kind of a veteran. Mm. 
uh, piloting this, but like just barely, like six years of uh, of active use of uh, uh, the Sparks. How much of those six years have been with the Sanguine, or have you? Did you build up to it, or were you always in on that Bloodbot? Um, I think like it was uh, like I, I think like Amelia said, you have to start off with something more basic. Mm. To kind of get used to things and and whatnot uh, before you you jump into the more advanced stuff, um, but I think uh, my first one was probably like a Voyager, mm. right? Um, and I I think like I advanced to the same green like faster than anyone else had previously, like for for whatever mm. reason, like it was like less than a year. I, I dropped the Voyager and I was able to go into the Sanguine because uh, some sort of circumstance kind of pushed me into that direction. I, I almost want to say, like, maybe we were attacked or something and I hopped into the nearest oh. uh, one near me um, and it was a Sanguine. Mm. And I was like, it say was that one, or did something happen like during a mission to the previous sanguine and you had to yeah I was, I was also thinking like you know maybe i was on a mission with a sanguine and and something happened and that they had to get out of their uh out of their uh spark mm. and for whatever Ooh, reason now. and now now they're gone and yeah because they got out of the car <laughs> highly yeah. you really never, did not recommend doing that, that out there <laughs> <laughs> no uh, it's like the first I mean, thing they teach you is like, never do not get open out. <laughs> the spark. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I okay. I like that. I think I like that better. Like we're we're out there on the battlefield together, and like they had to get out of their spark for some reason, like hyper specific reason, and um, I was scouting the area to for threats, and then when I got back. Uh, they were dead mm. and there's the sanguine and then I can see a threat on the horizon like that was tailing me on my way back and I'm like I can't handle this threat in a Voyager alone I'm gonna hop out get in that sanguine and get out of here <gasps> super cool were you supposed to do that or definitely not supposed to do that I don't think you're supposed to but I'm like, just wondering, like, were you authorized to use that one? I don't think so. Not at that point. But like, I oh, think I handled Ryan. myself. I think I handled myself like so well with it mm. that I. I that it was like up, action movie ending. They're like, we could punish you, but we're not gonna. Yeah. Congratulations. Here's a promotion. <laughs> you saved a lot more lives uh, <laughs> than than you risked uh, piloting this advanced uh, spark. So uh, I'll give you a promotion. That'll teach you not to do it again. Right. Well, then I also imagine like if if, you know, if we sort of work on the assumption that cities oftentimes have multiple Voyagers because it's important to have lots of scouts that patrol. But like they might only have like one or two of some of these more advanced ones like that. The sanguine spark is deemed more valuable or precious. And so losing it in the field mm -hmm. is costly to the city by comparison. And so sacrificing a Voyager suit for a sanguine suit is like a trade that allow like that mm -hmm. the fact that you did that makes it so that the city is not as mad at you about it when they're like okay yeah. at least you brought back <laughs> sanguine right you're not supposed to do this we got the good stuff right. yeah uh -huh. cool absolutely um and i think like the the call sign of the previous one was crimson uh you know something mm -hmm. else um so i just d d uh took the the crimson moniker from that in memorum and uh applied that to uh, my name cool uh and got my new call sign for that way love it so we kind of understand then like what drew you to the spark because it was it was, the, it was the moment it was it was necessary so mm -hmm. now you've you've been in the sanguine suit for for a few years now how have you sort of made it your own because like you said you, you've sort of done the honoring of the moniker and things like that but you still want to make the spark your own so what, what what have you done yeah um a like like real deep black and red iridescent cape mm. Ooh, no capes no this one this one's got a cape 
What kind of vampire would that? Because it like <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Good point. But it, it flows in the wind like, uh, and and it has like almost that. It almost looks like blood is flowing Ooh. on it as it whips in the wind. So spooky. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. very good. I love that. Cool. 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 Um, have you thought about what your uh, what what separates your grim from from other grims? I mean, I have, but I still, still, I'm still like, really, it. I'm still really struggling. I think it has something to do with like how it looks when I use it, not so much like the suit mm. itself, but like what that sort of like power looks like. Yeah, the, the act um, of enthralling. And I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm open to workshopping it too because I feel like I want it to be something about how it works, not just like the paint job or something like that. Yeah, because like you know the. But, um, Eddie Eddie drew the art for Grimm in such that you know, there's sort of these big sun shard fused blades that you sort of stab in and then you yeah. use that. But like mm-hmm. you can imagine that there are other ways that Grimm does this, like some maybe like sending out like a swarm of like nanobots that like inject themselves throughout the system, like the mm-hmm. system of the, the corpse and like animate it through like electrical jolts. Um, I want it to almost be that like when when something becomes a throat, like it becomes actually like a darker. Mm. So it's like even harder to see. Um, which I know like everything around us is already dark because there's no sun, but I imagine like, obviously there has to be some light so right. you can kind of see what we're doing. Um, but yeah, that like things become even like blacker, like. It's like it's pulling it? in the ambient light around it to power this oh. throat. Like it's almost like black hole kind of. Yeah. yeah so you're, you're moving like around that. these like shades, these these singularities mm-hmm. of. Oh, that's really gnarly and cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. That's what I think. Cool. Sweet. I like that. All right. Uh, who's uh, who's Spencer's? Uh, how long? How long has Spencer's pilot? Uh, how long have you been so around? Not very long at all. In fact, Isaac is not supposed to be doing this. Um, oh, so, cool, cool, cool. you know, there's sort of a there's a little bit of overlap with with our sanguine spark here. So Isaac works in one of the labs at the city and has been working on. Um, you know, play play technology because I don't know. I guess that's what we do here in the city. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think I have like a lab partner who is like they do the field research, so they they are the pox of the team, and I am the in in the lab researcher. And so mm-hmm. I think they like my partner came back from a mission, and like they didn't die right away, but they came back and like there was something wrong with them, and hmm. they. They died, but like I think it came through like from an infection. And so I've tried to keep this like sealed away from the rest of the city and like under wraps while I'm trying to figuring it trying to figure it out. But also the city expects Pox to go out for for missions. And so I'm going out there as Rasp, but I'm not Rasp. I'm 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 just Isaac the scientist who is like similarly like piloting a, a, a spark that I'm not supposed to. And I think it's, you know. Instead of going through that training of, yeah, I, you know, I did my time as a pyre and now I feel ready to be a pox. Like, I, I think I'm really new to this and I'm really struggling out there to, like, try and pass as, um, as my, my, my partner, essentially, uh, during this process. So I think I'm, I'm pretty new. And uh, what drew me to, to being the spark is necessity to try and somebody has somebody to do has it, to do it yeah. and i'm still trying to figure out what went wrong with this person who's come back is there a concern that it is the shard that there's some kind of like leak or so, I, like i think you know something like think, that that it is like you could get this virus too i then? think so i think i think it's that i don't want our shard to get infected i think it's more so like it's like mm-hmm. an over caution towards protecting the shard at all costs and so like to me um sealing away my partner and not revealing their death to the city and pretending to be them out in the field is a greater cause than possibly causing this whatever they mm-hmm. have brought back from the field I, I i think i think for sure that they came back from a mission against the lunar cult so i think this is definitely like weird cult influence like yeah and those moon people mm. do not like our sun shard and so like i think i'm especially <laughs> hesitant to try and tell people about this because mm-hmm. once there's cult corruption in a city like we've probably heard rumors of cities falling apart because of the cult like finding a hole and getting their way in and so 
I'm mm-hmm. trying to. And if a city is like powered by a shard, there's like obviously like a limited radius too. So like any kind of like mass hysteria is going to be we're like, trapped deadly like there's nowhere else to go you know you can't flee because there's there's monsters waiting for you out there and so um (laughs) so yeah i think i'm like desperately trying to play the role of rasp out in the field and trying to figure out what the lunar cult is doing um in this situation um so to, to to set like my spark i guess different than other sparks um i think i I what I've done is I've taken my partner's lab coat and I've like taken off like the patch and the name and I found a way to like weave them into like the the fabric of my suit so that um nobody can really see it it's not there to be like oh that's that person's name and that's their patch but yeah. it's like it's, clearly it's still right. John I think it's a way for me to feel <laughs> connected with my lab partner while I'm out there as like a small like okay I'm not alone out here. I'm not the only one in this pox suit, uh, not knowing what I'm doing. I've got this person um, with me in spirit while I'm mm-hmm. out here trying to do whatever it is I'm doing out here. Very did, cool. Did did the the old pilot have like a modulator on the voice? So is whoever's piloting it sounds the same regardless? I think so, right? I think there's like, um, there's, uh, I think with, with Pox in particular, there's a, like a lot of like rebreather tech and stuff like that because Pox has to be around mm-hmm. dangerous stuff so that there's no, you don't hear the person for who they are. You definitely hear this, oh, you know, like Darth, not like Darth Vader, but like how hey, different Darth Vader like- is compared to Anakin underneath sort of thing. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's meant to mask because I am I am trying to filter out all this gnarly stuff that I am messing with out in the field. Yeah. Yeah, so now you sound like James Earl Jones. Yeah, and too. that has always been my goal. And so, <laughs> right. I, I have one. What else would any of us I have want? One character creation that I feel like I can retire happily now. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, so now we know a little bit more about our our characters, our pilots, and and who's in them. And in the next step, I like to do the sort of like last step before we we get ready to um to think about like going into the dusk and missions is think about our our city for a little bit the city that we are a part mm-hmm. of um because the sun rained down on these sun shards and i imagine these sun shards come in various sizes and like a bigger the shard the bigger the city that can kind of be built around it because it can power more right. things but like tiny little shards might have really small settlements in towns and then there might be like big urban sprawls almost next to like the, the huge shards so what kind of like town slash settlement do we think we want to be in is it like a real small thing where everybody kind of knows everybody is it a massive place what what do we think i feel like it's bigger like if we have like these more advanced kind of shards Mm. like i feel like it needs to be a bigger settlement or 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 is it we've got only a couple of the more advanced sparks i don't know i feel like even in a bigger city you would still only have a couple okay you know, because I feel like it's it's easy to get like the sort of, you know, like we said, like the Voyagers and the, you know, that kind of stuff. But oh, I yeah, think, yeah. Um, you know, this is like we we're sort of the elite like. OK. Um, I think I think there are other scouting missions that go out and then when they find something, we get to go. I don't I think do that like we a... are the ones doing the regular like basic like we go out when there we know there's already something mm. there. We don't go to find the things. Mm hmm. I'm I'm picturing then like a almost traditional cyberpunk mega city mm. mm-hmm. um, like and, and the aesthetic of seeing that from the darkness in the distance. Yeah, uh, just f- sounds amazing with like the heart of the, the sun shard yeah. Yeah. In, glowing in the middle of the city. Mm-hmm. I dig that. That sounds um, awesome to me. Like skyscrapers, neon lights, uh, you know, like the the seedy underbelly of the city sort of sort of deal. Yeah. A um, lot of lot of metal and uh, sort of punk aesthetic sort of right. stuff. I like it. I mean, I'm sold. I'm 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 sold 100. percent That sounds great to me. Uh, sold city robots. Yeah. <laughs> <Sun> shard. <laughs> yeah. Look, we said sun shard in the first like two minutes of recording. I was there, so <laughs> yep. it's pretty happy. I need to no more. <laughs> um, right. 
the, so so we've established that it is sort of a big place, which means we want to start populating it a little bit. So part of that is thinking about some of like the big players in the city. So who are yeah. um, like some of the factions or organizations or um, VIPs that you know we may work for or work with or against um, or just generally are the 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 lifeblood of the city outside of us as the sparks. So from what you're talking about as like trying to hide the death of your Mm -hmm. lab partner and all that kind of stuff, I'm gathering that there's some kind of like corruption happening Mm. here that like that maybe the best interests of people aren't always the top priority. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like there's definitely some like, you know. Look, there's room for me to be anti-capitalist here is what I'm saying. Uh, I was about to say, <laughs> there, there you is mean room. the cyberpunk city is full of corruption? <laughs> I, look, look, it's not just aesthetics. Uh huh. This is my big argument about cyberpunk. It's not just cool neon Correct. stuff. Yep. No, I, I do like that, uh, that there's like uh, at least a couple factions uh, or, or, you know, the, the governing uh, Yeah, I mean, I think that they're the like itself. really sort of... Uh, it's sort of expansion at all costs. Mm. Um, and we don't necessarily care a, what we have to do to get there or B if we've really done it all the way to get there. Like, did we really get rid of all of the monsters in that area? Or is it like close enough because the people that live that far on the edge don't don't really care if they get eaten. Yeah. The important people live closer to the center and then the people out on the edges, if they get eaten, sometimes it happens, you know, I can, I I'm I, now I'm picturing like th- a big spire yeah. in the middle and then mm-hmm. smaller spires as it comes it out. It's just kind of, yeah, like domes sort of. So like out. there's like the central spire that that is around the the central, uh, you yeah, know, sun shard. shard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there some kind of like fancy like building that sort of like spirals up around it? Oh, I think so. Um, like I think. Lo- oh, so, yeah. Like it's an actual like spire. Sun spire. Yeah, I think like so many sun shards are like practically encased and like it's just like it's there for purely survival. But this shard is so big and we've used it for so long that we have now started to truly play with the technology, I think, more so than other places. Architect around yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. we've I think our city has generally moved past the like we need to establish a survival place. And now we are in the OK, we're surviving. But like we can like yeah, make it pretty can, too. Now Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we've moved past just like brutalist architecture. Right. Like <laughs> if this is our reality, let us begin to play with it. Uh and I so yeah, yeah. that's cool. I I can almost see like closer to the center too, like uh almost a solar punk sort of mm. vibe to yeah. it with the uh with like greenery and beautiful flowers and like urban trees and all that sort of stuff blended in with the architecture. And then as you get further away from the source of all that, that sun energy, it gets like darker and it's darker, oh, brown grittier, and, more metallic yeah. and artificial. I yep. love that idea that there is sort of this idyllic central core to it. That is like, yeah, I think on top of that spot, like there has to be like a beautiful garden. Oh yes, like, and it's called Babylon, yeah. and it's what yes, yes. Uh, and that's oh my god, that's so good, that mm-hmm. is so good. <laughs> I love this. I love it. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Ryan. Like it gets more metallic and artificial and darker and all that kind of stuff as you mm-hmm. go out. Um, but the central part is just bright and lit. And I think the other thing, too, is that it's lit all the time. Mm. So it's always daylight in the central part of. Yeah. 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 That's and a- then they and then they have, you know, day night cycles the further out you go. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they got to conserve the energy a little bit. And the city's right. just been expanding too much outward that they've been pushing the limits a little too much. Mm. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, so then as you little... get poorer and further out, you don't get as much sunlight during the day either. Yeah. Because and they you're just getting start part cutting of artificial... off districts. They're like, sorry, for the next month, you don't get the sun. Like, we need to. Yeah, uh, you the... only get it two hours a day right. or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. this is gnarly. I imagine oh. then since there are sort of these like these degrees of power and wealth and resources now that I imagine like there are definitely people in organizations that have sparks just as their own personal sparks like rather Ew, than like like yes like Ew. not just like the sparks is like a force that is there to like help with whatever the city needs but there are definitely yeah. people who have like commissioned their own sparks and hire out their own personal sparks that do things for God, them can and you are- imagine the amount of wealth 
to like to own power a spark. your own. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Ew. Gross. And they're like parading themselves around like look how amazing I am. Not even going out to fight with the spark, just right, like just to the grocery store. Right. Just You're like, let me get in my spark to go get some, some wheat flour. Uh-huh. Oh, this is setting in oh, this <laughs> oh, we almost didn't I even hate need it, to but leave I hate it, but I hate city. it. <laughs> like no. You could do so much in the city itself just for our missions for what we're doing. Like, yeah, there's monsters outside, but it sounds like there's a lot of monsters just inside. Just like right, yeah, they're all <laughs> <laughs> I think we need our blood vampire to go in there and take some blood. Uh, uh-huh. I hear rich blood is especially did, tasty. Did, so did somebody call for a donation? Mm. Uh, <laughs> I dig yeah, this. Yeah, they they did just like a couple hours ago they were <laughs> yep <laughs> i'm even imagining then like with the sort of descent that would that would start to emerge from the outer rings of the the city that i i can even imagine then that there are um small but like very hidden factions of people who are like in line with some of the enemy factions like the yeah. corvus dominion are a highly advanced alien species that are on our planet and i think there yeah. are people who would try to be like working with them to sabotage things further into the city or to like you know they're like i mean i could totally see like moon cult sect things popping up because they're like if this is what the sun is i don't want Mm -hmm. that you know like what have they ever done for me right yeah go ahead i i was thinking like this corvus uh these aliens what if there's also a sect of them that are Mm -hmm. wanting to help humanity so like mm-hmm. now you've got sex within the city that are on the the good alien side and sex so we've that got are good bad on... aliens and bad good aliens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's mm-hmm. cool. That's cool. So like one's trying to destroy the city from within and like help that that resistance mm. be like really antagonistic, and one's trying to better the city by taking the government down in a way where the people will have more power and like not cause just chaos and destruction. Yeah. That's so good. That's so good. I'm now even imagining in the inner circles, because one of the other enemy factions are, are the haze dwellers, which are the, the beasts of the planet, the, 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 you know, the animals that have changed. And those mm. are things that are probably constantly terrorizing the outer rim. But I imagine that like the ultra wealthy have like almost like in a, a gladiator arena where they like capture these things oh, and bring them in for entertainment. Of course they do. And so Gross. like, I hate them so much. The people God, on the outside are actually dealing with wealth. this. Yeah, oh. exactly. I think <laughs> we just need to keep leaning into that. <laughs> right? Oh yeah. This, is, this has like, uh, like Robin uh, views or, or, or yeah. vibes going mm. with it. It's so good. Mm-hmm. So I think we've set up a pretty, <laughs> a pretty horrible, horrible place. place. Yeah. But yeah. now let's talk about the outside where it's really bad. <laughs> where it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. So the, the last thing we do is to consider the outside world, the, the dusk itself. So the dusk is sort of a catch all term for anything that is outside of the cities that the sun shards are built around. And the dusk is an ever shifting place. It changes things, not only like how animals uh, behave, but also it literally shifts and moves to the point where it becomes unpredictable to move through the dusk. All the more reason why anybody who's not in a spark should never go out there. Um, and so one last thing that we do is consider um, a recent experience or memory that each of us have had in the dust mm. to sort of contextualize a little bit of it. Um and then uh, we can wrap up by just thinking about like what out in the dusk is the stuff that we as a group are interested in doing now that we have the context of the city that we work out of. So we should start with like a recent experience that has like stuck with us or def- helps yeah. define a bit of what the dusk is like. Mm-hmm. All right. I got one. OK. The, the our, our big city is close enough to the coast like so if you're on the upper levels of the the sun spire uh like dear babylon you can see the like the coastline to the ocean mm-hmm. right like far off on the over the horizon and on a mission near the coast i remember there was a thunderstorm brewing over the ocean which is not you know unusual or anything like that but 
I remember looking out at the storm, just kind of admiring it during a lull in the action and seeing a dark mass in the mm-hmm. middle of the ocean. Not like, okay, maybe it could have been a wave or whatever, but then you could see like dark tendrils oh. reaching up to the lightning, <laughs> like 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 lightning striking these dark tendrils, and then the energy crackling down. And it's like, did I see what I thought I saw? Mm. And you're like wiping off the screen, like yeah. <laughs> you got a little blood on the screen. You're like, is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. That's very good. So great. The ocean is also very haunted, and that makes it <laughs> even worse than it already is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is good because what I was going to say mm. is that I think the things that are outside, um, you know, in, in the dusk are slowly leaning more toward that like bottom of the ocean kind of creatures that are like just really weird mm, yeah. like um like the angler fish right of. so like those things you know like it's like plants that don't photosynthesize and like animals that don't need sunlight and like they don't need light to see and mm-hmm. i think that you know the things that used to be in the ocean maybe are not so much in the ocean anymore because it is dark enough everywhere for those things that were down on the bottom to like slowly evolve their way up to obviously like the pressure level isn't the same but like um, so you're starting to get some like real creepy stuff up here. Oh, yeah. Excellent. I love it. I think one of my most recent because I'm relatively new. I haven't been going out very much. And I think I made the mistake on a, a mission going out by myself because I was especially nervous about getting caught. So I was like, I'm just going to go solo. I need to do some field tests with stuff. And I went out there and I think there used to be like another small settlement that was kind of close to ours, like to the point where like ours was eventually going to just absorb it. And it would be we would take their shard and they would be part of the outer ring sort of thing. And (laughs) I was out there working on some uh, some new strains that I had been developing in the lab. And I saw the shard like I saw a flicker on the horizon where I knew this location was. And then I, uh, you hear this like horrible screeching, not of an animal, but the, of metal twisting. And I see the entire place like curl into like a sphere of metal. And like the, I watch the shard slowly get snuffed out as the city seems to like curl in on itself on the outside. Oh, and I know oh, something is going on out there uh, that is apparently powerful enough to start to like, and, like it was a real small shard. So it's been drawn to the small shard and it is like curled it up. Mm. Oh, so uh, don't, it's bad don't want there. that happen. Don't want that <laughs> happening to our city. Imagine. Well, ours is big enough. So uh, you say that uh, the bigger the city, the bigger the crunch. <laughs> Delicious. Um, I know. And so, yeah, like the last thing we kind of consider here as we think about the dusk and we think about the city is like, what are the you know sort of the missions that we would typically be thinking about or prioritizing as sparks here? And I'm I'm so conflicted because. There's it sounds like there's just so many horrible things going on in the city that I almost feel like like working in the city would be. a Well, I don't know. Are we revolutionaries? Like, are we like are we or are we like we're here to like help whatever the city needs and like what the mission like who tells us our missions? Right. And so like where do we where do we decide like our priorities in all of this? I mean, I feel like we as players like I think. I think we start by working for the city. Mm, I think that's where we start. And then I think, you know, as a a campaign might progress, which it won't, obviously, (laughs) um, you know, like we would have to, that's the kind of stuff that I as player like to grapple with is like, okay, am I the good guy or no? Um, And so having to kind of grapple with like, okay, are you going to actually do the mission that you were given? Or here's all these other details of things that are going on. What are you doing about them? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like the thought of the organization that we're a part of is almost like a mercenary sort of organization mm-hmm. that is neutral. So like people can hire them or uh, but we get a lot of contracts from the city yeah. itself. Right. So like the the most the most stuff that we have to do is like by the bidding of the city. And uh, for the most part, it's like, you know stuff that seems innocuous or like yeah this makes sense that we're doing this Mm -hmm. but like every now and then we get sent on missions that are like why are we the ones like hmm. doing this yeah and like why did they send out both sanguines and 
both uh, Grimm's mm. to different areas um, and, and leaving none left in the city. Like, that, that seems like, a little weird. what are they weird. doing in there that they don't yeah. want us what? to be in there? Yeah. I think exactly. That's a fun space, too, where we are, like, we were, we're hired out, which naturally lends itself to the, where the wealthiest people would hire us to do their gross stuff. And I think they still mm. do try. I also like to think that our organization is sort of, like, pushed back. Like, we don't have to say yes to missions. And so that's right. that has become the impetus for why there are personal sparks amongst the wealth they're like well if they won't do it we will make our own sparks to do the mm. things that we want done right. and then that oh, makes them like really they have their gnarly. like butlers pilot the sparks yeah, on missions right. and, and then then they they personally gallivant around in it yeah but then there's the oh. question too of like if these are the ultra wealthy and we choose not to take the job what are the consequences of that too right. for us yeah. you know right. um, which I think is also a fun space to play around in and I know that my oh, character yeah. in particular will, will like enjoy the path of moving towards the sort of um, more resistance or questioning the the thing because already i'm super nervous about telling people what's like that i'm not a pilot so i think i wouldn't right. trust yeah. the organization to tell them but if we start to like splinter off or or deviate like being mm -hmm. around fellow deviants then i would start to go oh okay so i have a I have a secret. I, I have need a confession. To tell you. Yeah. 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 Um, so I. Well, and I also think there's a lack of trust there because, like, if your partner did die, like, what you know, what happened there? Yeah. Why did mm -hmm. that happen? And Was it because of somebody's anyone? irresponsibility? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I really like the thought of starting off not having the full picture, but then like uncovering a secret, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. I think like the these like random sorts of missions or quote unquote random sorts of missions culminating into mm. revolution uh sounds really fun yeah i'm for it we did it we did, we did it. it we made some very cool characters in a very cool oh. world for them to to play in ah uh, that was awesome <laughs> this is i want to play this like so bad <laughs> i know why did we make this podcast ryan like what a stupid <laughs> what a idea first. <laughs> what a dumb idea for a podcast <laughs> 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 Um, well, thank you so much for joining us for our character creation for Nova. This was phenomenal. I had so, so much fun. I I I had so much fun, and my fun I absorbed by emotion uh, osmosis through your fun. I'm so glad yes. that you had fun. Like it was <laughs> for me. I you know. The listeners can't see it, but I'm grinning from ear to ear yes. like the whole time watching you both like <laughs> unravel like what your characters can do and mm -hmm. as we build, getting so excited. It was, yeah. Truly, so I love fun. watching Ryan's face as he's like picking things. He's like, Oh no, oh no, oh no. How do I choose? <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> ah. Uh, do you want to go ahead and remind everybody uh, what kind of stuff you're working on and where they can find you? Absolutely. So, uh, my name is uh, Spencer Campbell. You can find me online uh, at Gila RPGs, G I L A RPGs dot com. That's my website. It has Links to my Itch.io store where you can get all my games uh, as PDFs. It has links to my Shopify where you can get printed copies of my stuff, including Nova that we played today. It's also my Twitter handle. That's always a good place to, to keep most up to date with what I'm up to is just following me on Twitter. Um, I'm brewing up. I'm never, I never stop uh, in terms of designing. <laughs> I'm just constantly brewing. Um, soon to release or maybe released as of when this comes out will be Slayers 1.5 update, which is a new rules update to my game Slayers with new art and layout and fun, cool rule changes. Um, and I am launching in August, maybe September, um, my next Kickstarter, which is for Rune. It is a solo uh, t a tabletop role playing game inspired by the Souls like or Soulsborne genre. So oh. it combines narrative uh, and environmental storytelling with tactical grid combat all done by yourself. Um, it's been a lot mm. of fun playing it and, and playtesting. So I'm excited to launch that uh, a little bit later. That's very, very cool. cool. So just like awesome. a couple things that you're doing. Just oh, and then, like yeah, I mean, truly, it's it's it haunts me. It haunts me. <laughs> yes. I can't turn it off. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> oh, well, thank you again, uh, Spencer. And thank you to everyone for listening. Uh, please join us on our next episode for our discussion block. And I think probably some very nice fanfic. Yes. <laughs> Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. All right, so I am I am dying to hear your uh, your aftertakes. Yeah, so I 
am on record as being like, I don't love combat in games, right? Yeah. Like, I don't like the way it sort of grinds everything to a halt. And now there's distinct turns and we do, and you it know. it feels like, so different than the actual, like, other gameplay, right? Right, right. Um, and I love Spencer's take on this as like it being like a puzzle solving, like optimizing yeah. the combinations of things like tickles my brain yeah, yeah, yeah. because it isn't that challenge kind of fun. It is, you know, it's like a problem solving puzzle. Well, it's a, kind it's of, a different type of challenge, right? It, right, right. Yeah. It's not just like overcoming the. Yeah. The bag, you know, it's not pure brute force. Mm -hmm. It is finesse. And, um, and I just, I really like that sort of critical thinking aspect mm -hmm. of like, how do I optimize this situation with the people that I have here, the, you know, like mods that I have, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. I just thought that was really cool. And um, because there's no dice rolls, I could see it kind of being really snappy. Yeah, absolutely. And then like later on when you get more mods and now you have all this open to you, you get to have that sort of thought process before you go on a mission even. Right. Which is really right. Cool. And like ugh, having to like pick which yeah. which things you put on and you know Oh no, I have five amazing mods and I can only use four of them. Right. Uh, oh. It is cruel. It is cruel. It is. But it is. uh but I love it and uh goodness gracious, uh the discussion that we have next week is fantastic. Yeah, I feel like we got to have a really a lot of great design discussion yeah. in these episodes, even in the first two. But the third one gets gets really in depth, and I, I just love our designer episodes; they're great. They're so good. And Spencer was so much fun to talk to. Absolutely. Uh, well, before we let you go, uh, we do have a few announcements. Uh, and and first up, uh, if you haven't checked out our Patreon lately. Uh, we do have our video actual play posted of Amelia and I trying out a broken uh, by Ben Wallace uh, when we got together in person in my studio a couple weeks ago. Uh, it turned out great, and it was a great experience getting to play the game together. Uh, you can find that video and a lot more by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Speaking of Patreon perks, one of the perks is us personally thanking you each and every episode um, until the list gets big enough that we have to split it between episodes. But for now, um, without further ado, drum roll. Uh, thank you to our first patron, Lieutenant, for your continued support. Mm -hmm. Eric Bonds, thank you as well for your support. David, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus and former guest, thank you. Matt Newton, thank you as well. Daryl Holiday II, thank you for su your support, um, as well as all of the great comments on our Patreon posts. We really appreciate those. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, a lot of good stuff there. Shadim Cabal, thank you. Caleb, a.k.a. The Shyest Barbarian, thank you so much for your support. Benjamin Sweeney, thank you as well. Lorcan McGinnis, thank you so much. Rob Fletcher, thank you. And Kevin Brown, thank you. And thank you to all of our future patrons. Uh, we wouldn't be able to make this show as easily without your assistance. And we truly appreciate your generosity. Time for a review? I believe so. I believe it's time for a review. Ooh. If you would like to hear your review read on the show, you can always leave one for us at Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, or on our Facebook page. Um, but here is one from P. Hopkins, or Fopkins, I guess, if you want to pronounce your P-H with an F sound, up to you. That's what I do. From, from the United States of America on iTunes, titled Lovely Insightful Show. I love learning about new games from the show because they take the time to really talk about the character creation process and how it fits in with the game. Amelia and Ryan are a treat to listen to and have a warm dynamic that's so inviting to hear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I love that. Absolutely. I love I our like warm people dynamic. people say that we, that we have chemistry. Yeah. We, we got lucky. We're good, we're good buddies. <laughs> we are. <laughs> well, uh, that is all that we have for today's episode. Uh, join us next episode for some phenomenal discussion and some great fanfic. Oh, the fanfic. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Until yep. then, stay safe, everyone. 
take care, drink some water, and take some breaths and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us, under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows, like Mystery County Monster Hunters Club. Check out Mystery County Monster Hunters Club, an actual play podcast where the heroes are teens and the teens are a mess. Join a group of impulsive but well-meaning after-school monster hunters in the year 2006, doing their best to protect a weird little town in the 51st state of Superior. Through the game Monster of the Week, this cast of improvisers confronts cryptids, magic, and the biggest monster of all, feelings. Find Mystery County Monster Hunters Club at mysterycounty.com or your favorite podcast app.